No one said it would be easy. We're here on problem number 81 of Physics GRE GR1777. White light is normally incident on a puddle of water. Index of refraction 1.33. A thin 500 nanometer layer of oil index of refraction 1.5 floats on the surface of the puddle. Of the following, the most strongly reflected wavelength is. So there is a phase shift between the ray reflected from the first and second surface since N2 is greater than N1. For constructive interference of reflected light of a thin film on top of water, we have 2n index of refraction of the film times d cosine theta 2 equals m minus 1 half times lambda. So if we plug in our numbers, 2 times 1.5 times 500 nanometers equals m minus 1 half lambda, uh, m minus 1 half quantity times lambda, uh, where we set theta 2 equal to, equal to 0 since we can get arbitrarily close to that angle and still have a valid problem because neither angle was given in the problem. So 1,500 nanometers equals quantity m minus 1 half that quantity times lambda. So if we set m equal to 1, lambda equals 3,000 nanometers, m equals to 2, lambda equals 1,000 nanometers, m equals to 3, lambda equals 600 nanometers, m equals to 4, lambda equals 430 nanometers, dot, dot, dot. Well, m equals to 3, lambda equals 600 nanometers. That's answer C. Number 82, as represented in the figure above, a light ray refracts from air into a rectangular block of plastic with an index of refraction n greater than 1. At a point on the side of the block, the ray partly reflects at an angle of 60 degrees and partly refracts. The value of the angle alpha is. So from Snell's law, we know that n1 sine 1 uh, I'm sorry, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Uh, so we're going to call this angle right here, that angle we're going to call theta m. Uh, theta m is going to equal 30 degrees since right triangle and 90 degrees minus 60 degrees equals 30 degrees. And because the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, then theta is also going to equal theta is going to also equal 30 degrees. So the index ref of refraction of air equals 1. So sine theta of alpha equals n2 sine theta. Sine theta of alpha then equals n2 sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees equals uh, 0 0.5. So theta, uh, um, theta of alpha equals the quantity n2 times 1 half divided by sine. Uh, and that is going to equal answer D. Number 83. Assume that the solar flux at Earth's surface is 1,000 watts per meter squared and that the sunlight is normal to a completely reflecting surface with an area of 3 meters squared. What is the total radiation force exerted on the surface? So the power received equals 1,000 watts per meter squared times 3 meters squared. So power equals force times velocity, so the total power equals the force times 2c, where total power equals 2 times 3,000 watts time, uh, equals 6,000 watts. Uh, since the velocity is positive v and then minus v, i.e. It, it, it comes into the surface and then is reflected out of the surface, uh, the total velocity change is 2v, hence we had 2c above. 2c being the speed of light of the photons, so the power equals 6,000 watts equals the force times the velocity equals the force times the speed of light. So the force equals 6,000 watts divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second equals 2 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. Uh, if it was completely absorbed and not reflected, the radiation force would be half of this, i.e. it would be 10 to the negative 5 newtons, but it was not. It was reflected, and so that is answer C. Number 84, the hydrogen lines observed in the spectrum of the quasar 3C9 are shifted so far into the red that their wavelengths are three times as long as those observed in the light from hydrogen atoms at rest in a laboratory on Earth. If it is assumed that the shift is entirely due to the relative motion of 3C9 and Earth, 
the relative velocity or the relative speed of the quasar is. So the relativistic Doppler effect uh, we know is uh, the frequency of the sender divided by the frequency observed equals the lambda observed divided by lambda of the uh, emitted signal, this, the, the sent wavelength, and that equals the square root, the whole quantity square root of one plus V over C divided by one minus V over C. So lambda observed over lambda uh, sent, the signal equals three. And so three therefore must equal the quantity uh, square root of one plus V over C divided by one minus V over C. And so we can square both sides and then from some algebra know that nine times the quantity one minus V over C equals one plus V over C. We're gonna set C equal to one since the answer is in units of C. So nine minus nine V equals one plus V, eight equals 10 V and V equals 0 0.8 C. That is answer C. 85 protons used in cancer therapy are typically accelerated to about 0 0.6 C. How much work must be done on a particle of mass M in order for it to reach this speed assuming it starts at rest? So V over C equals 0 0.6. So our um, special relativity function is gonna equal one divided by the quantity square root of one minus V squared over C squared and that's gonna equal one divided by the quantity square root one minus 0 0.36. Um, 0 0.36 came from 0.6 squared. And so that is going to equal one divided by 0 0.8 and that equals five fourths. So from the relativistic kinetic energy equation, which thank you hyperphysics, you are a wealth of knowledge. Please refer to hyperphysics if you are ever curious about anything, they have a great, great website. Um, so the kinetic energy, relativistic kinetic, kinetic energy equation, Ke, is going to equal mc squared divided by 0 0.8 minus mc squared. Uh, so the kinetic energy is gonna equal 5 fourths mc squared minus four over four, common denominator, four over four mc squared. That's gonna equal 1 fourth mc squared. And the work is gonna equal Ke final minus Ke initial, and the Ke initial is gonna equal zero. Um, since the initial velocity is zero, so the work is gonna equal one fourth mc squared minus zero equals 0 0.25 mc squared. That is answer A. 86, the sign of the charge carriers in a doped semiconductor can be deduced by measuring which of the following properties. So the Hall effect is the production of a voltage difference across an electrical conductor transverse to the electric current in the conductor and to the applied magnetic field perpendicular to the current. The Hall coefficient is the ratio of the induced electrical field to the product of the current density and the applied magnetic field. So let's just observe again. Thank you, hyperphysics. Everything you need to know is in this diagram. Uh, so the charge is flowing in a straight path with no magnetic field, but when a magnetic field uh, with a perpendicular component is applied, the paths of charged particles become curved. This sends positive charges one way and negative charges the other way. This charge difference creates a voltage that you can use to measure the sign of the charge. And so therefore that is answer E, the Hall coefficient. 87. In the experimental setup above, two masses, M1 and M2, are connected by a massless string over a massless pulley. Mass M1 slides on a frictionless surface. The values of the two masses can be measured, as well as the distance d and the speed of mass M1 as it passes x1 and again at x2. The experiment can be used to do which of the following? So let's just go through one, two, and three. One, no, momentum is only conserved if no external force is applied. Uh, and gravity is, so velocity changes, and so does the momentum, mv. Gravity is the external force here. Uh, so two, yes, kinetic energy is conserved. Potential energy is just converted to kinetic energy. And three, yes, since you can measure the speed at x as well as x2, and uh, since you know the distance d between the two points, you can measure uh, at constant acceleration, which is g. Uh, so that is going to be answer e. 88, an airplane drops a payload while traveling due north, parallel to the ground at a constant speed of 100 meters per second. If air resistance is neglected, 
what is the velocity of the payload relative to the plane four seconds after it is released. So the velocity x of the plane is 100 meters per second and the velocity x of the payload is also going to be 100 meters per second. Uh, the y direction of velocity uh, from our kinematic equations is going to be vi plus at. Uh, the y direction of velocity is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That quantity times 4 seconds. Uh, the velocity y of the payload is going to equal minus 40 meters per second. Uh, the y direction of the plane velocity is going to equal 0 meters per second as the uh, problem indicated it's going to be parallel to the ground. Uh, so the velocity relative to the plane of the payload uh, v of x is going to equal 100 meters per second minus 100 meters per second. That's going to be 0 meters per second. Uh, the velocity in the y direction is going to be minus 40 meters per second minus 0 meters per second. That's going to be minus 40 meters per second in the y direction. That means that it is traveling down and that is going to be answer B. Number 89, two balls identical in every way except that one has twice the mass of the other are dropped from rest from the same height so that they both reach terminal speed before hitting the ground. If it is assumed that the drag force varies like the speed squared, what is the ratio of the terminal speeds of the balls? Note the subscripts H and L denote the heavy and light masses respectively. So air or fluid drag friction is velocity dependent where F is of the form F equals minus B V to the N uh, where B is a constant and the minus sign is because the force acts in the opposite direction of the velocity. So the force of the heavy ball is going to equal minus B V squared and the force of the heavy ball is going to equal 2, sub, 2 M subscript L times A equals minus B V squared and the velocity of the heavy object is going to equal the square root of 2ma divided by minus b, that quantity square root, and the force of the light object is going to equal the mass of the light object times a equals minus bv squared, and the velocity of the terminal velocity of the light object is going to equal the square root of ma divided by minus b. So the terminal velocity v heavy divided by v light is going to equal the square root of 2ma divided by minus b. Uh, that quantity square root uh, divided by uh, quantity ma divided by minus b, that quantity square root. And so the terminal velocity ratio vh divided by vl is going to equal the square root of 2. And that is answer b. Number 90. One end of a horizontal massless spring is attached to a wall. A mass of 0.3 kilograms is attached to the other end of the spring and rests on a table. The mass is displaced by 0.03 meters from its equilibrium position and released. It has a speed of 0.04 meters per second as it passes through its equilibrium position. In the absence of friction, what is the total mechanical energy of the system? So at the equilibrium position, the potential energy of the spring equals, equals zero. So the kinetic energy equals one half mv squared equals one half times 0 0.3 times 0 0.4 squared. And the kinetic energy equals 0 0.15 times 0 0.016 equals 0 0.24 times 10 to minus three joules. Uh, one joule equals 10 to the 3 uh, millijoules and so that therefore equals 0 0.24 millijoules and that is answer A. Okay, I'll see you in the last set of 10.